Hello, I'm JW. Uh, today we're looking at this dreadful thing again, which is the uh, hexagon type adapter thing. Um, we saw in the last video it's pretty much a piece of junk in almost every way it possibly could be. But uh, let's just see if the USB thing actually still works. And bearing in mind we shoved 3000 volts into the previous video, so that's by no means certain. Now just see if this thing uh, worked or not. Well, this is the light that actually came with it. Uh, we can just test that this does work by putting it into this uh, knownly decent charger. We can plug it into the dodgy thing just to see if it works. So there you go, obviously uh, that works just fine. And uh, not really any reason it wouldn't because basically it's just going to be the LEDs and possibly either a resistor or some other dropping device now. Just because we can, let's just see how much current this thing actually uses. So hopefully you're about to see that it's uh, 150 milliamps, uh, nothing uh, excessive. And that's at, uh, just over 5 volts there. So then does the actual uh, thing itself still work? Bearing in mind we shoved 3000 odd volts into it earlier. So uh, let's just uh, put that there and then switch on. And as we can see, uh, no, it doesn't. There's absolutely nothing coming out of that. So uh, let's plug in the converter there thing, or the power meter. No, it's not working in the slightest. So uh, obviously the uh, USB part is bust. So we'll just uh, turn that off there and uh, remove these items from it. Now, of course, it's probably bust because we applied that 3000 volt test to it, which uh, was probably not necessary, but uh, nevertheless, uh, we did anyhow because we can. So, uh, I'm not working at the moment, but as we saw in the previous video, the uh, circuit on the back of this has put all four of these sockets basically in parallel. So it's basically a single output USB device. It's not in the, going to be in the realms of providing much in the way of power. Being generous, it might have been a two amp thing, so you might get sort of 500 milliamps out of each one. But in any case, definitely not going to be uh, up to the job of charging any modern high powered devices. Now I'll just remove this uh, plug because I don't want to use the plug for the high current test because otherwise if it melts it'll destroy the socket we've got so we'll look at that another time. Uh, just stripped off the insulation here. What we've basically got is this blue fairly soft plastic type covering. Inside it's full of white powder, presumably it's asbestos or chalk or some other toxic waste. Two conductors which are that browny coloured stuff we saw in the previous video. It's very sort of dull appearance there and it's not uh, Particularly good condition, there's some kind of mark on it there, it's been uh, damaged or stuck to something. And the third piece isn't actually a conductor at all, it's basically just a hollow plastic tube, presumably put in there as a filler so you can get a more of a round shape with the three items rather than just two. So uh, there's no earth wire there, so it couldn't have been connected even if uh, somebody wanted to. And in terms of actual uh, wire dimension, these are certainly in the uh, small scale of things, though uh, I think these ones might actually be copper as they do bend reasonably decently, unlike the aluminium ones which uh, generally just spring back to their original shape. So there's a reasonable amount of copper contained within there. But, uh, anyway, we'll just uh, say stick this outside and uh, shove a bit of power through and then see what melts. So what we've got here is a fairly familiar arrangement as we've used in several other videos. So clamp meter there in the yellow, that just shows us the current. Temperature in the background there on that black thing, currently 21 degrees centigrade, so basically uh, ambient temperature. And then we've got the timer in the front just to give some indication of how long this has been going on for. And so we've already started the timer going, so just counting up there with the seconds. Now we're just connecting to the device uh, with the wires only via that connector block in the middle there. And uh, I put that plug into the actual thing there. That plug is actually a short circuit inside between the line and neutral. And there's no fuse inside either. So basically it's just going to be going through the wire, through the wires inside the adapter, through the plug and then back out through the adapter and through the wires as we see there. So let's get with turning on the current and then see what happens. So I'll turn the current on there, and uh, we'll turn it up to I think about 10 amps to start with. That should well be within the rating of this device, because bearing in mind that uh, it's got a 16 amp type of plug on the end for use in Europe, so 10 amps should be well within the capabilities. So current there just uh, on the bound about 10 amps or so, and we'll leave this going for a while and see where the temperature gets to. So we're into about seven odd minutes now, and it's still uh, about 10 amps, and temperature is only about 49 degrees centigrade, so that's not particularly 
excessive. I mean, this uh, PVC is rated about 70, so it should be all right. So we'll turn the current up, I think, to say about 16 or so amps. See uh, if anything happens with that. Now, the current's only dropped away to nothing, so something has gone open circuit there. Temperature's only about 58, so that's nothing excessive at all. And also, temperature's now falling away because the power is turned off. Now, while I just poke about in there and dismantle the thing to see what the problem is, the uh, issue was that the uh, actual contacts are so crappy that the heat has caused them to open, so they no longer grip onto the pins of the plug. So, uh, that particular socket we were using is now essentially useless. Meanwhile, well, that was only at a fairly moderate temperature, and the cable was only at about 50 degrees centigrade. So it may have been hotter, of course, inside the device, but certainly uh, you wouldn't expect it to fail in that way. Now, I've just bent the uh, prongs together fairly well and rammed the plug back in, so it's a bit more of a robust connection. So once again, we'll turn on the power, and we'll go back to that 16 amps that we saw previously. And, of course, the temperature's now back down to about 25, 26, because obviously it cooled off while I was tampering with it. Now, unfortunately, it's gone open circuit once again, and as before, it's the same crappy contacts. They've just literally uh, heated up slightly and, of course, are now make, making contact with the pins of the plug. So this device seems to have some kind of built-in overload function where if you put anything in it for a length of time, the contacts just fall to pieces and then uh, obviously you don't get any power coming out. Now, I'll just move the plug into the next socket because obviously the one we had before is now ruined. So same as before, just 16 amps or so. And so this is the uh, socket uh, adjacent to the previous one. Now you can see the current was fluctuating around there because once again the contacts in the next socket have done exactly the same thing and those are now no longer gripping on the pins of the plug. So that's two out of the three sockets now completely destroyed and that was only with 16 amps which was hardly what you call excessive. And again the cable temperature is only about 55 so again not particularly uh, problematic there either. So we'll try with yet another socket and this one so is on the other side there so we've busted two on the right hand side this is on the left. And these are actually getting closer to the mains lead inlet. We started with the one that was furthest away from the actual mains cord. Now turn the current up to about 28 amps here. Quite frankly, we've had far too much time wasted on this already. But unfortunately, you see the current has now gone down to zero again because this third socket has now done exactly the same as the others. It's gone completely open circuit because the contacts are basically heated up and have no spring left in them. So well, that's three out of uh, all of them busted. And you can see how loose the... Uh, actual plug is there. So uh, these are utterly useless. You couldn't actually use this thing. I know so you can actually put the thing the wrong way round with the uh, earth pin sticking out. And as you see there it is literally just holes with no uh, contact resistance in there whatsoever. There's simply nothing to grip it at all. Now what I've got here, I've just opened the back of it and I've just twisted together the two wires in the back there. So I'm just sticking up there. Because obviously any attempt to use the actual outlet is going to be a failure because every time you do it they just uh, simply fail after a couple of minutes. So uh, power is actually on here and we're doing about 20 amps here and temperature in the cable there is about 60, 62 or so and it is uh, slowly rising. The wires in this do seem to be a reasonable size so overheating of the flex uh, certainly doesn't seem to be a major problem although it's already approaching uh, the 70 degree limit for PVC insulation. But say bearing in mind we are running this at 20 amps, which is probably more than it was designed for, although it's not exactly what you call an excessive overload. Now temperature is exceeding 70 now, it's just 73 there, so uh, this is also getting into the uh, melting and burning area, so we'll leave this on for a while and see what happens. Now it's been on for several minutes now, and you can see there is a certain amount of smoke coming off of the wires and things on the back of the board there. The cable or the flex there is up to 184 degrees centigrade, so that's uh, way too hot. Current's about 25 amps there or just below. Current's falling away a bit because of the uh, resistance increasing due to the heat. So as you see, it's a fair amount of smoke just pouring off there and being blown away in the wind. Now I'll just turn off the power for a moment there. So what I'm going to do is just basically put the thing uh, back together as much as possible. Shove that uh, rather hot flex uh, in there. And I'm just going to leave it then in this state. You can see the flex there is actually incredibly soft and uh, bendable. But, uh, we'll uh, shove it back together as much as we can and then crank on the power once again. 
So power on once again and uh, temperature about 137 centigrade there. And we're running at this about 28 amps or so. And you can see that the wires on the top are already sort of softening and uh, moving slightly as they uh, also get very hot. And there's a bit of smoke now starting to come out of the device. So now you can see a significant amount of smoke is uh, coming from the cabling and the thing itself. And cable temperature now 151 degrees centigrade, so excessively hot there. That's uh, in the way more than double the temperature of its uh, 70 degree rating, assuming of course it's uh, decent PVC. And we can see a load of smoke now pouring off and uh, basically just being blown by the wind. Current running about 30 amps, which is basically the maximum that this particular arrangement can provide. So still doing just over 30 amps there, and you can see the installation is now charring and blackening. Large amounts of smoke uh, pouring off in all directions, and temperature is 174. Clearly this is not what you want to be happening. And we can see there the current has now dropped away to pretty much nothing. Uh, something's obviously melted through or burnt or gone open circuit in some fashion. And all we're getting probably is just a bit of uh, arcing between the charred remains. So it powers off now and you can see the whole thing is literally a smoking, smouldering mess and uh, not only is the flex melted but the actual casing itself has also turned to this uh, gooey, stretchy mess. So uh, the entire thing is clearly not heat resistant in any way and as you can see there the uh, actual cable has melted right through the top of it. The actual outlets are completely uh, gunged up in there and you can actually just sort of bend all of the molten plastic all over the place. And on the bottom here you can see again where the flex has just literally melted into the bottom of the casing. So again no heat resistance there whatsoever. And although this is quite hot, bearing in mind it was only about 175 centigrade, so uh, not a particularly high temperature in the general scheme of things, but see that's enough to completely soften the plastic and completely destroy it. Now of course the only remaining thing is, uh, is it flame retardant in any way? And of course the point with these things is that when they uh, do set on fire they should be self-extinguishing so once the source of ignition is removed the flame should die down but as we see here it's still burning there after the flame was taken away so let's just apply a bit more flame in the bottom there over the uh, whole surface of the thing and then we shall see how long it takes to actually extinguish. So there we are, I see there's a nice uh, fire going away in there and large amounts of black smoke uh, pouring off. And it's certainly not self-extinguishing, in fact it's actually getting far worse and the flames are spreading and uh, increasing in size significantly. So uh, pretty obviously this is not flame retardant in any sense of the word. And if this did set on fire in your house then basically it is going to just burn your house to the ground. There's no uh, chemicals in there whatsoever. So we'll uh, so just put that out with the water there. And of course that is the end of that smouldering wreckage. So in conclusion then, the outlets themselves are extremely dangerous because you can put plugs in any or which way you want. There's no earth connection in the device or even any wire in the lead. The USB part may have worked but unfortunately we killed it with 3000 volts. The plastic and the lead is certainly not heat resistant in any way and the whole thing is not flame retardant either. And quite frankly, even if you plug something in and it did work for a while, it's not going to do it for long because of course the contacts in there are so poor that even a slight amount of heat causes them to open and no longer make contact with the plug. So overall a big steaming pile of junk and something that should not be for sale and certainly if you've got one of those you need to get rid of it immediately. So anyway that's it for this time and until next time thanks for watching.